Eastleigh is a very inclusive and diverse community. We have over 67 languages spoken and we have a larger than average number of students on the SEN register, approximately 17% of the population. We also have an on-site resource provision for 15 students with a complex needs learning profile and we have around 20 other students that qualify for high needs funding. We are in an area of deprivation so we have a large number of students that are in receipt of free school meals and obviously the pupil premium funding as well. At Eastleigh we believe in inclusion, we've got a long history of inclusion and we believe that it's something that you have to do every day so you can't choose to be inclusive part of the time. And so that means every student is part of whole school systems whether that's be for the pastoral system, teaching and learning um, or extracurricular provision. This school embraces inclusion you know, as, as, as much as it possibly can. I think you know the, the perfect society is an inclusive society and a lot of the issues that we have in the world today arise from that lack of tolerance, lack of understanding. Putting the children in an inclusive situation is, is the way to go because they, then they are accepting, they, they've just got friends, you know, they don't see the disabilities or, and, and vice versa. So it breaks down all those barriers. You know, the students have some real challenges. If you're building a new school, it would be a lot easier because you could design it into it and you could, you know, some of these old corridors and things like that are not very accessible, stairways and things. So as far as possible, we try and make it as accessible as possible. In year nine, we do offer a directed pathway for the social development. And we, we have from personal progress level, for again very complex learning needs students to level one and we make sure they they can be entered for an award for a certificate for a diploma and we just make sure that they achieve the credit level that enable them to get an accreditation at the end of a year 11 which is externally verified as well and we are going through the same process uh, we we've got the course and then we adapt it and we personalize it at their level oh every drop oh every drop's gone is there any more left there's a programme that we use, for, um, it called Earwig, where we put all the kids' pictures and then we write reviews on them. But what you do, you upload a picture, so you do new record. Yeah, we do it for English, all their lessons basically, and we do it so we've got evidence. They attend all their core subjects, they attend options, and that's with the mainstream students as well. They go to their mentors, like any other student. They go to the dinner hall to have their lunch. Lunch break is outside in the playground, break time in the playground. So um, they are part of any educational visit. So most of the time they are with their peers. I think the inclusive approach works at Eastleigh. I also think that they're included in society in a way that they just wouldn't be if they were attending a special educational needs school, where they're just separate and they often that I think that they probably wouldn't meet anyone else outside of that school in their daily lives, maybe between home and school, there's, there's not really that many other places they're going. So one of the big things here is that they get a lot of interaction with other people from around, around the school and that benefits those people as well because you know, they're becoming more tolerant, they're understanding needs of others much more. I just think it's a much better way of running a school. You know, education is about educating the whole child and it's very important that all children are measured on progress, whatever that progress is. But the systems that we have to measure that progress should reflect the starting point of the child. And if it is very needy, it should reflect that. And I don't think we have that system yet. Politically, you know, that's a whole different ball game with, with progress aid and the way that pupils are judged and I think the government could, could really look at that, uh, the DfE, they need to look at the way that they hold, it's right to hold everybody accountable but I think there needs to be some caveats there for students that have real serious disabilities. I, I would say to other schools that you can and I would also say to the Department of Education as I have done that the the problem is not people's willingness, the problem is at the moment is the system, the accountability system that we're in, does not recognise or reward schools for the, the work that they do in inclusion. In fact, almost all the measures that you're measured against um, actively discourage you, in my opinion.